This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. And again, guys, coming on camera, CPL style, but I'm coming on with another Canada jacket. You're going to love this one. Check this one out. Umbro number. Inside profile. Whoop. In-house model. Another in-house model. And then wait till you see the back. Oh, wait till you see this. What do you think about that? Pretty cool, eh? So another in-house version. Welcome in CPL fans. Welcome in Canadian fans. Welcome in Canada fans. Nice little number, eh? So... Let's get down to business. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great night. And I hope you're getting ready for some football, some big time soccer this weekend, both club and international. We are so spoiled for choice. It's fantastic. All those other leagues around the world, pretty much, they stopped. Here in Canada, we get the CPL and we get the international games too. I mean, pretty lucrative, pretty cool. Anyway, let's get down to business. Three games to glory. Three games to glory. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Valor really weren't part of the playoff picture. But I remember talking to Tommy Wielden Jr., cavalry coach, telling him, I think they're going to start closing the gap. And they have. The question remains, who misses the playoffs? I mean, Pacific FC, long, long, long time top of the league, looking like they were indestructible. They seem like they've got a bit of a problem going on right now. I mean, do they miss the playoffs over Valor FC? York United still trying to break down that door. It looks a little too far to reach, and I think in reality it is, but it's so sad because York United are playing some great soccer right now. Had they do that in the early part of the season, they're in the playoffs, no doubt about it. What I'm looking at is not the end of this season. I'm looking into next season because I think that the way Halifax United, sorry, Halifax Wanderers are playing and York United, the way they've like literally started to come together and play, Edmondson as well have started to pick up form as well in certain terms too. It bodes well for a great season next year, but sticking to this year, three games to go. Somebody's going to miss out the playoffs. Someone is missing out in three games time. Jot down, drop me a comment down below. Who you think is going to get in the playoffs? That makes it easier. What four clubs are going to make it? Who's going to drop out? Does Pacific miss it? Does Valor miss it? I mean, a few games ago, Pacific had a couple of games on Valor. And had they won, it wouldn't have been a problem. Now it's starting to look like an issue. And recent form is not too good for Pacific either. A couple of draws in the last few. Three losses. It's not very good. It's not Pacific-like. You Pacific fans know what I'm talking about. So it's going to be a real nail-biting three-game finish to the end of the season. And also things like, um, you know, who's going to win the golden boot? Who's winning the golden glove? You know, who's going to be coach of the year? Who's going to be our best under-21 Canadian player of the season? Lots of questions to be answered. Those will be answered in the next couple of weeks. Who's your player of the season? Who's your coach of the year? It doesn't necessarily mean it's the guy that wins the league, hey? I mean, let's just per se, backing it up a little bit, that York United did get into the playoffs. Then you're looking at the, the coach of the year possibly being there. The way that Alan Kosh has done a great great job with turning FC Edmonton around into a bit of a playing unit. He could win the coach of the year for making them a better team. You know, you got Stephen Hart with Halifax. He's made them a better team as well. So not necessarily does the top team have to have coach of the year. It really is who made that team better. I think that's where we really need to look at it. But more than likely, the team that wins the league will get coach of the year. But look how close. I mean, look at this, the standings. Look how close the... The guys are from first to fifth, an inclusive six if you're talking York United with Halifax just a point behind, but top five is pretty tough. I say, jot down your top four. If I was going to say right now what I was thinking, I think Valor FC's got a top, top, top chance of getting in. It's just, is that game in hand for Pacific going to be the one that counts? Let's, let's say this much. If Valor win this weekend, it's going to heap some pressure on Pacific if they lose. Now, let's start looking at the first game. First game, first game is York United taking on Valor FC. York United taking on Valor FC. I think that this could go either way. Valor need the points. You see, if Valor grab the win, it's really going to heap some pressure on Pacific. Valor's got to keep on winning to get in the playoffs, in my opinion. But there comes a time where maybe one of them teams above them starts to falter. It's that close that if one of the top teams starts to slip up in the last couple of games, it could be really, really interesting to see who drops out. Whoever has the best games in the next three games, or the best form in the next three, really is going to make these playoffs. 
When you're looking at York United, you're looking at a team that's really come up. You're looking at Valor, it's a team that's come up. It's really hard to split these, but if momentum is something what Valor's brought, they could actually get the win. But York United has been on fire as well recently too. It's a real tricky, tricky, tricky way to call this one. It could be a draw, is what it says to me. But you've got to go for one of these teams winning the games because playoff points are absolutely vital right now. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I've got a feeling that Valor is going to grab this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if York United get it. At the end of the day, I think positively, you've got to say slight favourite, York United. Let's see what happens. Next game up, hey, I tell you what, this is top of the table bashing. Cavalry FC taking on Atletico Ottawa. Ottawa in first, Cavalry in second. Ottawa going two Cavalry's at Cofield at Spruce Meadows for the game. 42 points Ottawa, 41 points Cavalry. At the end of this game, I don't want to see either of these two teams grab a draw. I think for the excitement of the playoffs and the final push, let's have a winner here. Atletico is on some really decent form. Unbeaten run now, good streak going. I'll tell you what, Cavalry FC unbeaten in one win so far. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. The last time Ottawa were in town, it was a 3-0 win, and that was only about a month ago. Ottawa really came to town, loved the grass, loved the way it played, and Cavalry really didn't have much of an answer on the day. To get anything out of this game, Cavalry's got to bring the A game. They've got to turn up. They didn't turn up in front of goal, but they turned up on the rest of the field. It's a very close game, and that 3-0 does not really depict what happened on the field. Tommy Wilder's going to have a lot to think about before this game gets underway, but I think that you've got to say... It's a win-win for Tommy Wilden's boys. I think this one, they turn it around. They really have to go back at Ottawa for that loss, a 3-0 embarrassment on home soil. Because let's face it, that's the biggest loss they've had franchise, 3-0 at home. You don't want that to have happen again, right? So I think that Cavalry's probably going to have the bit between their teeth. Eventually, Ottawa's got to lose a game. You lose more on the road than you do on, at home in reality in football. I think Cavalry should be the team to take this one. Don't rule out Ottawa making life really tough. And they do have a great team, Ottawa. They really spread the play well. They know what to do. They slow it down. They speed it up. They kill possession on the other team. They get in there. They hustle you. They don't stop working. They're tireless in their exploits. It's a very, very good team that Ottawa has. But Cavalry is as good as on the day. And I really think that on the day, we're looking at the most, at the worst for Cavalry is a draw. I think they will get something out of this game, but I do not think it's going to be 3-0 to Ottawa this time. I'm looking for a 1-0, maybe a 2-1 to Cavalry. If Ottawa do win, I think it's a 2-0. That's what I'm saying. But it's going to be very interesting to see who sticks to first and who sticks to second. Or if indeed Cavalry do go back top. Let's see what happens. But I'm saying Cavalry is my favourite for the game. But don't be surprised if Ottawa gets something out of it. I tell you what, especially people like Oli Bassett. Next game, Halifax taking on Pacific, who desperately needs some points. Halifax and Pacific. Halifax unbeaten in three, Pacific unbeaten in two. But Pacific hasn't won in the last five. Three defeats, then recently two ties. Halifax, two ties and a win recently, doing pretty good. Stephen Hart's got the team looking like they're a real football team now. And you've got to say, home form recently for Halifax has been pretty decent. This is going to be another game where Halifax is going to test one of the big teams. Big teams. Pacific are in a slump. Another loss here. And that really puts the pressure on those guys getting into the playoff. You Pacific fans know exactly what I'm talking. You've seen your team take the down slope. And they're going down, 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 down. Quicker than the Titanic at the moment. You've got to say, a win is absolutely crucial for Pacific right now. Anything less is going to push them further behind Valor and potentially out of the playoffs. It's not done and dusted by a long meet, but Stephen Hart's got Halifax in the right frame of mind. 6,000 crazy fans in the stadium. I think it's going to be a great day for Halifax. I think really Pacifica are slowly tiring. They had that big trip over in CONCACAF, and ever since then, it's taken their legs away. I really feel for Pacific because it's a decent team, but again, I think on the day, Halifax is going to win this one. Stephen Hart's going to have him ready to go. The defensive structure is going to be strong. And all it's going to take is one goal. Just one goal is all they need. And get another win. That'll be nine on the season for Halifax. In the pursuit, remember I talked to Stephen Hart recently and he wanted 11 wins on the season. Let's see if they get that 11. Right now they're on eight. If they win, they'll be on nine. 
And with two games left, you never know. But on the day, I think you've got to say Halifax takes it 1-0 and Pacific may well be in some serious trouble. I hope I'm wrong for you Pacific fans and I hope you can get the win. But things are not looking too good. And remember, you're traveling, you're not at home and hey, home cooking in Halifax, they know what that's like. The last few teams have not gone in there and really got what they wanted, have they? And there's some big teams gone in there and not really got the results that they wanted. So life is tough for people going at Halifax and the Wanderers are making life tough on the field in Halifax, down in the Commons. 1-0 Halifax, Pacific, I think. Tight, tight, tight is a word you're going to get used to hearing because it's getting tighter by the game. And finally, FC Edmonton taking on Forge FC. You'd think on the face of this that Forge would just go in there and just grab the points. I was at Clark Field last week for the FC Edmonton game versus Cavalry FC. 1-0 to Cavalry. Quite frankly, within the first, first half, Edmonton should have been 2 or 3-0 up. They had some amazing chances in front of net. Young Smith blazed a couple wide. Wyshevsky would be close on a few calls, and he leads the line well for Edmonton. Wyshevsky, great German. But Edmonton could have been in the lead a couple of goals in that first half. I was really surprised when it didn't go that way. And then in the second half, because you don't take your chances, Cavalry just needed one chance. They took it. Joe Mason, fantastic header. In between defenders, bangs it in. Beautiful header. But that's what happens when you don't score, Edmonton. People score on you. I know Alan Kosh was happy with the, 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 the play, with the team's performance. But if you execute in front of goal and you start making those... 1-0 losses into 1-1 one -one draws or 2-1 wins, you start climbing the table. I think on the day, Edmonton can feel aggrieved they didn't get anything. But Forge is coming to town now. Bobby Smyrniotis and his team looking to keep the form going. Remember, they've come out of a massive slump and they're really, I would say they were really on their heels for a while there. It seems to be turning around, but a loss here, I tell you what, then Valor closes up. If Pacific wins their game, they close up. It's going to get closer and closer and closer. And for Forge's money, they need to get three points on the road. Otherwise, it's going to be a case of who drops out, Forge or Pacific? Because Valor right now are looking like they're going in. So it's very interesting what's happening with the playoffs. And I've got to say, at the end of the day, you'd love to see Edmondson win a game, right? Their form's not that bad recently. And you'd love to see it for Alan Kosh and all the hard work his team is doing and that his coaching stuff has put into that team because you can see they're a better team they're becoming a better unit all the time and eventually someone's going to win that game that's why i talked about the cavalry game you see last week i thought they could get that win and they nearly did is it going to be this week that edmonton stump a big team at home at clark field is it going to be forge fc that lose that game you're gonna have to wait and see but i got a feeling if edmonton played the same game as they did against cavalry fc yes they can get points out of that game they've just got to execute in front of net because if they don't you know give forge fc one chance they will looking at the table you can see who's left and who's right on me who's got the points and who's where you know what's going on there is it going to look like this at the end of the weekend and by the way at the end of the weekend i'll be giving you the post game and then we'll get ready for more international games coming through guys i tell you what there's a lot of stuff coming through canada qatar don't forget about it that's tomorrow morning 11 o'clock friday morning Canada versus Qatar, 11 o'clock mountain time. All you Albertans, that's when it's on. If you can't catch it, don't worry. I will bring you the post game, probably close to noon, whereby you'll have, or probably close to one o'clock, sorry, whereby you'll have all the details on the game if you didn't catch it, but I'll keep you informed. And uh, like last thing I'm going to share with you is the World Cup song. Get onto the World Cup song down below. Click on it, pass it around and start listening to it. We've had some great feedback from the World Cup song and uh, we've been impressed with who's been in touch with us about the song. And we're talking a company and somebody who's got interest in it so far. I can't tell you any more, but uh, the song's written. Get into it, share it around. It's the World Cup song, it's Canadian. And I'll tell you what, it took us a, a while to get it. But you know about all the World Cup song and how it, if you didn't know about the World Cup song, down below there's a video click on it it's 10 minutes long and it gives you the whole backstory about how that song came around it's an interesting story i advise you to check it out if you don't want to check it out the next one to it is just the song it's two minutes 56 i think long leading anyway it's cpl it's canadian you got more football than you can handle right now it's absolutely fantastic get onto it get into it
Love it. And I'll tell you what, after the weekend and after the games, I'll see you after all of that with some more as we get closer to knocking on that World Cup door and the end of the CPL season and the playoffs. You see what I'm saying? Isn't it great to be in Canada? We've got so much soccer, it's untrue. Okay, guys, come back for more on the next show, which will be probably Sunday. Cheers, guys. The Ultimate Soccer Show. Join me, listen, you'll love it. Everybody does.